Another interesting thing yesterday, um, uh, I don't know if you saw this, Claire, in the National Review, there was a piece by, I'm forgetting the guy's name, that basically uh, made the argument that segregation was better for African Americans than what has happened in what he described as the liberal period of the time since segregation. Uh, and I was looking and I was like, like the, I can't believe the National Review printed this. Like somebody yeah. had a contest. They must have had a contest to be like, who can write the most offensive, idiotic, like white privilege thing yeah. you possibly could. And then they just decided to publish it. Yeah, I didn't see that. What is it that brings out the stupidity in people about these particular debates? Well, I mean, I don't know. I think it's it's hard to. I mean, I can't put myself in the mindset of somebody who would, you know, necessarily write that. But I do think it's there is a vocal segment of the population. I don't know how widespread it is, but like in so in this monument debate that we're having right now, it's like I do think there are. So I was in West Virginia on Friday. I, I went to a, a town hall that Senator Joe Manchin held held there and I was talking to some people at the state fair so West Virginians and I did encounter and and this came up during that town hall too you know you, you get a fair amount of people who say things like you know Nazism is bad but these statues that's different and 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 yes I mean it's not which is ironic <laughs> because West Virginia went with the north they broke away from yeah. Virginia because of the civil war yeah there were Confederate flags, however, outside of being sold outside of the fair. Right. It's, it's interesting to see. Yeah, and I mean, I think when people talk about history and it's like, but that wasn't even, I mean, Confederate flags wouldn't have even been, you know, part of that state's history in the way. Anyways, it's it's just, I, I think, and I don't know, you know, exactly where that comes from, but that desire to kind of stake out a middle ground or say, like, there's shades of gray here and, and you know, yes, this is bad, but we should keep the monuments. And I, I mean, I guess there is, a, you know, it, it is worthwhile talking about, like, history is complex and the way we sort of interpret it in the present and the way we memorialize it. But at the same time, I think, yeah, you just don't want to be I think seen as defending. I think people defending. add layers of complexity to hide what they're doing. Like, oh. I think the that's civil, true, yeah. You can argue about the Civil War being about commerce. You can argue about it being about states' rights. You can argue about, Like, at the yeah. end of the day, the South held slaves and wanted to continue to hold slaves. And the attitude that you had to have in order to justify slavery is that people who were enslaved were subhuman, right? That they were or lesser than the, the people who were holding them in slavery. That was the entire ideology of a large portion of the country that decided to fight a war to leave the country. Like, yeah. All of those things are inescapable. And that does not mean that people who are – my wife is from Georgia. It doesn't mean that people who are from southern states today hold those views. It doesn't mean that they believe in them. It doesn't mean they venerate them. It doesn't mean that they have a, that the region hasn't changed. All it means is when you put up a statue to uh, a general or – for Virginia, northern Virginia for my entire life had Jefferson Davis Highway yeah. right outside Washington, D.C. And I – how can you memorialize the president of the Confederacy without sending a strong message to everybody that where you stand is on that side? And I think there are a lot of people who are engaged in this debate who don't understand uh, for reasons of lack of empathy or for, because they haven't personally been in that situation before. If you put up a swastika, that is an effort to intimidate uh, and harass mm -hmm. Jewish people. If you put up a statue to a Confederate general, you are putting up a large reminder to anybody who is a person of color, whether they're black, brown, whatever, that they are seen as lesser in your eyes and that you believe in a time, uh, and it may not be your intent, but that's certainly the effect. And if you if you lack the empathy to be able to see that, um, you know, you're probably always gonna stand on the side of these statues. Uh, Jamie, I promised a story. Uh, when I first got Let's to Cap Capitol Hill, or early in my career co covering Capitol Hill, um, Charles Pickering, uh, a judge from Mississippi, was nominated for a federal judgeship, judgeship circuit court of appeals. He was the father of a sitting congressman, Chip Pickering, from uh, also from Mississippi. Um, and Chip Pickering was interested in getting uh, members of the Congressional Black Caucus to support his father, or at least stop opposing his father for uh, for this judgeship. 
And I remember walking through Statuary Hall in that time and seeing the statue of Jefferson Davis and thinking to myself, you know, if Chip Pickering would offer up getting rid of this statue of Jefferson Davis, I bet he'd get it a lot farther with Benny Thompson, the uh, the congressman from the Mississippi Delta, the mm-hmm. African American congressman from there, uh, and trying to at least lower the temperature of some of the opposition to his father. But like, I can't, you know, at that time it was unimaginable that a white Southern congressman would. Uh, stand up and say, and this is only 10, 10 12 years ago, we yeah. stand up and say, uh, I, I want to get rid of the Jefferson Davis statue that Mississippi has sent to the Capitol. Um, today, I think that uh, it would be a lot easier to do that. I think even, I think those who support the idea of a Southern heritage in a way that's not uh, as clearly divisive as some of what we've seen lately um, would probably most want to protect that by uh, by making it less of an issue. Yeah. Yeah. And it's been interesting, like you said, about how th- how so much has changed. I mean, even though I think some people were, you know, shocked to see that, you know, the realities of, of what happened in Charlottesville are still, you know, that that's still possible in 2017. But at the same time, you know, seeing the backlash to that, there's been so many, uh, so many cities and so many mayors and towns that have taken action to remove statues in the wake of this, like, with Baltimore taking down its statues quietly during the night last week. And I was writing about that late last week and just looking into the history of that a little bit. I mean, basically the city had started basically, I think had created a commission to study like, should we take these statues down after what happened with Dylan roof? But it had, they had sort of drafted recommendations, but then they had sat on a shelf and kind of collected dust and really, you know, what happened in Charlottesville, that was it. And it was just, even after, you know, even after no movement for for a while, it was just all it took was that, and overnight they were gone. So, yeah, I, it's it's interesting. I, obviously, the neo Nazis feel emboldened, yeah, because their no, their numbers are small, and yet they are demonstrating in ways that they have not demonstrated in this country in many, many, many years. Um, do you think that the president's latest commentary on that is likely to have? A dampening effect. Um, do you think what we've seen over the course of the last ten days is like likely to have a dampening effect, effect, or do you think that they will continue to be emboldened? And if so, why? Well, I think, I think, I mean, both. I don't know which will win out. I mean, I do think seeing. So you already saw. So at work, we're tracking sort of upcoming protests because we want to be ready and and for, you know, being able to think through when things are happening and just have have an awareness of that and. You know, even after Charlottesville, a number of marches and protests were canceled. Like there was going to be this march on Google, which, you know, these are different things. I'm not trying to say they're all the same. And a lot of the organizers of some of these subsequent events have tried to distance themselves from Charlottesville. So I'm not saying they're all the same, but they are sort of ultra right or far right, alt right kind of protests and activities. And you already saw cancellations. Come on, alt right? Seriously? Oh, I'm not saying that that's not, but I'm just saying, like... Let's just call them Nazis. Just from, like, a perspective of terminology, you've seen organizers trying to distance themselves from Charlottesville, which, if nothing else, I think at least shows that there's some stigma left to go around. And I think that's important because I think the issue is what you saw in Charlottesville, people just marching. The fact that so many people showed up publicly didn't care if they were getting photographed, wanted to be there in a very public demonstration. I mean, I they think don't want that, that now. Yeah. They're I, getting tracked back. They're losing so, their jobs. They're lo- By the way, I believe in free speech. I, I believe the Nazis ought to be able to demonstrate. Like, I don't have any problem with them holding a march. I, I mean, I, I have a personal problem with it, and I, you know, but they ought to be able to speak. Um, they ought to be able to. I mean, that's our whole that's whole, our whole experiment. I would defend mm-hmm. their right to to speak and hold demonstrations. What I do not defend is their right to um, is their right to incite violence. Mm-hmm. Right? There is a limitation on our speech. There are you know you often hear defenders of the Second Amendment say, well you know you can't limit the Second Amendment because you don't limit the First Amendment. It's a dumb argument because we do limit the First Amendment. You you cannot incite violence. Yeah. Um, that the Supreme Court has ruled on this. And some of the things that these folks are doing are, I believe, inciting violence and go beyond um, beyond where we have a clear right to speak freely. Um, and it's a hard it's a hard deal. I mean, I think there are some people who conclude that if they walk in into the face of a Nazi marching in their area, then they 
they conclude that they have the right to punch that Nazi and a right to be judged by the jury of their mm-hmm. peers as to whether they're guilty of a crime or not. Um, and, you know, this is this is problematic, but I, I would not say that we should get to the point where they can't they can't march. And I think that uh, I mean, I'm glad they cancel their events, but I hope it's not that they're intimidated um, out of the uh, idea of, you know, having that free speech. Right. I think uh, hopefully it's that they're intimidated out of um, creating hostility in a way that uh, begets violence and, and is you know problematic. And hopefully they're ashamed of their speech rather than uh, believe that they're not allowed to have it. Yeah, I think it's probably more a degree of, of shame and, and not wanting to be necessarily associated with violence, at least from the perspective of some organizers. Um, but yeah, I do think also what you saw in Boston, I mean, that was clearly, you know, I think a massive victory for the counter protesters that showed up. And just it's a massive victory for yeah. America. It was a massive mm-hmm. victory for humanity. It's a massive d- victory of good over evil. Yeah. And so I think. Let me be not morally ambiguous. <laughs> I, I think that. It wouldn't be surprising if you see, you know, further cancellations of some events that have been planned or just people deciding not to, uh, you know, try to come up with the next rally that that could in any way be like Charlottesville. But at the same time, I do think that what the president said and his both sidesism has an impact. And I think that the fact that many sides, I think that the fact that it, <laughs> there was a lot of commentary and speculation and criticism that there wasn't an adequate police response to what happened in Charlottesville. I think those kinds of things for people who are, you know, essentially like white men who are radicalized and and racist, I do think that there's still going to be like an emboldening after effect to that. So I think, you know, you can have both. And and I certainly wouldn't think that this is over and not going to happen again. 